Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilo, and so this is the series where I help you to become a better Factorio engineer. Today we're going to address an issue that I'm sure that many a Factorio player has been struggling with, how to build a great oil refining setup that will last both through the early game, the mid game and the late game. It is relatively easy to build either an early game, a mid game or a late game build. The challenge is how do you make a build that you can stamp down in the early game, but you can upgrade continuously and you unlock new tech and get new recipes without tearing the whole thing down. At the end of this video, you will no longer need to worry about oil refining in Factorio anymore. This will now be a solved problem and you will have the blueprints that helps you transition from the early to the mid to the very late game. Let's dive in. Factorio Masterclass is my series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve your game. Each episode starts as a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. It's over at twitch.tv slash nilaus. You're very welcome to drop by. This usually happens on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. Feel free to drop by so you can help decide, design and discuss upcoming guides. Our collaborative designs are always superior to what I could have built myself. If you have ideas, comments or feedback, you're very welcome to leave a comment below or join our Discord server with more than 5,000 members discussing all the games we play here on the channel. Let's start with a very basic blueprint for basic refining. The very first time you get oil, you get the basic refining and here's a proposed blueprint. Now let's first describe some of the content in this series. I will have a combinator here that lists all inputs and all outputs so you can get an overview of what this build is producing and consuming, including intermediate steps. This one is consuming 100 crude oil and outputting 45 petroleum gas. So not much. Let's hook it up to oil so we can see it working. And now everything is producing. I have set up an immediate extraction so that I always have a consumption so that this one will never run full. You may notice the hazard concrete that I've indicated here. This is important and it's part of the blueprint. This serves two purposes. It helps you with alignment of the next blueprint, so you're absolutely sure it goes the right place. On top of that, the most important part is actually the fact that it helps you to make sure that you do not build anything else within this square aligned here. This is what our final build will take, so leave this space empty in your base. As you can see, I'm bringing in oil from the right hand side but you can also bring in from the left hand side that depends on where your oil pumps are available now i don't think there's much more to say about this so let's transition into the more advanced oil processing as soon as you research blue science the first thing you want to do is get the basic oil refining done so let's stamp it down here and see what it looks like now this builds also requires water so let's hook up the water immediately with water attached, we can now take a look at the inputs and outputs. You can see here, I have listed the refining process, the heavy oil cracking and the light oil cracking. So that when you close this num this combinator, you can see the total here. It is now producing 98 petroleum and still only using 100 crude oil. So we have doubled our output from 45 to 98 petroleum per second. This is of course in a steady state. Now the important part of this build is that you are also now producing lubricants as well as light oil. These are output in these two locations. You can see the red wire attached. This is controlling that I am prioritizing the production of lubricant and light oil into these boxes until I reach a certain threshold. I'm doing this through the use of tanks, pumps and red wire. Let's go through how it works. Let's start with the lubricant. The lubricant is getting a heavy oil from here, all heavy oil is gathered in this pipe and going up here, so it goes into this excluded little network here. This pump is currently shut off. You can see the little red marker over on the right hand side. That means it is currently shut off. That means no heavy oil will go in here and these two chemical plants doing heavy oil cracking are currently idle. The way I'm doing this is I am taking the, on the red wire, if we look at the red wire, I have now in this box here, 3,500 lubricant. That is fed into this pump. And this pump has a condition that says when it is less than 5,000 or when the lubricant in the box, in the tank, is more than 5,000, then it will allow lubricant to go into the heavy oil cracking. 
Similarly for light oil, however, light oil works in a slightly different way because light oil is now output all the way up here to the central pipe and then distributed into the light oil cracking. It's also coming from the heavy oil cracking as that is online. The light oil cracking is controlled not on the input side, but on the output side. This is what this pump is doing. This pump is outputting the petroleum that comes exclusively from the light oil cracking back into the petroleum storage. But this pump will block this belt unless I have 5,000 light oil already stored. Additionally, I am putting a condition here to say, I don't want to fill up all 50,000 in this storage capacity. I only want to set up 10,000. So when I reach 10,000 in this tank, then this one will shut off and then all of the light oil available will now be redirected exclusively into light oil cracking to petroleum. Going back to the lubricant, we can now see that this wire condition is green. We have more than 5,000 lubricant in our storage and therefore I will continue. I will now allow the heavy oil coming up here to be both going into the lubricant production as well as going into the light oil, the heavy oil cracking. You can see these are flaring up, but they are at this point, they are scaled towards these two can consume all of it. Therefore, having all four chemical plants active means that they will all be starved a bit. That'll only happen until our storage of lubricant is full. In this case, I also have a condition to stop storing more lubricant. This is set to 10,000. So once we reach 10,000 lubricant, I don't want to store anymore. We have now reached the steady state of the build. You can see here that there's 10,000 lubricant and 10,000 light oil stored. That means at this point, all products being produced will go exclusively into the light oil, the heavy oil cracking and the light oil cracking. And now we are achieving this amount, 98 petroleum being produced per second. Now 98 petroleum per second will not last you very long and you need to do an upgrade. So this upgrade is the next tier. This employs beacons and modules to scale up. As you can see, this superimposes really well on top of it. And as you stamp it down, everything will work, except for one thing. Unfortunately, modules are not automatically placed on, on existing entities. So that means you have to put these down yourself. Also here. You have to put those in yourself or deconstruct them and reconstruct them with, with blueprints. Let's take a look at the first thing. This one is the 831 petroleum being produced by this build. It's a massive improvement and more than a factor eight compared to the previous. And this is of course in the steady state. We are also using 555 crude oil. So that's also quite an upgrade. So keep that in mind when you upgrade. Additionally, something else to keep in mind is how power intensive this is. For example, these ones take 22, the oil refining takes 22 megawatts. The chemical plants take another 22 megawatts. The beacons take another 19 megawatts. So all in all, this build takes 63 megawatts of power as long as it's on. Even at idle, it takes about 20 megawatts. So keep that in mind before you decide to do this upgrade. Also, it's very expensive in terms of modules. So make sure you actually have enough. You can start by using tier one modules and then upgrade to tier three modules when you have those available. Let's note some of the differences between the previous builds. You can see that we have added a couple more, three more light oil production here. That is because, because of the productivity, we are now generating more of every oil, more heavy oil becomes more light oil cracking. So we need additional here. This is why we left space early on. And as you can see, the space is being filled out very nicely here. Before we dive into the final and in my opinion, most impressive build, I'd like to take a moment to thank all the Patreon supporters who make it possible for me to make videos like this. You may have noted that there are no sponsors on this, on this channel, and that's because I rather want this to be a community sponsored channel for as long as that is possible. So thank you very much for all the support from the Patreon supporters. If you want to support the channel and what I do, then pledging on Patreon is a great way. Thank you very much. Now let's dive into the final form of this build there where you can see the whole thing really coming together. This is the build we have currently. And if I just do this thing, you can see that it doubles and everything tiles perfect. You can see in the middle, there are some additional pipes being attached. As we stamp it down, we now have double the build. 
This is a late game build, keep that in mind, and we're bumping up against the throughput of the pipes here. Let's take a look at the throughput numbers. We're now producing 1660 petroleum per second, but we're also consuming 1100 oil and we are consuming 1800 water. So 1800 water is going to be more than one offshore pump, so you will need at least two offshore pumps. I have conveniently split it so that you can take one in here and another one in here. So that should make it easier for you to get the water into this build. When you need to get crude oil into here, it is probably necessary to put occasional pumps to keep up the pressure if you have a very long oil pipeline. Just a note for the nitpickers among you, this part is not going to be constrained. As you can see here, it does not bump up against the maximum throughput of the pipe. Pipes are not constrained to 1200 units per second, as some people claim it is not. It is depending on how frequent the pumps are. And with a pump here, and these ones services and pumps, this is more than enough to get the 1200 in here every second. Keep in mind though, if you build this setup, that when it's in a steady state and you're not consuming lubricant and not consuming light oil, you will fill up a tank, a storage tank in exactly 15 seconds. So probably a good idea to keep multiple tanks around as well as taking multiple lines outbound. There is one quirk to this build that I'm sure some will call an error, but it is actually quite deliberate. As you can see, there are two lubricant producers. This is going to be more than enough, even for a 1000 signs per minute base. However, if you look at it, these two heavy oil cracking are gated behind the pump, while these two are not gated behind the pump. The reason for this is that if you drop below the desired value and the lubricant, then this pump will shut off. However, the amount of heavy oil being produced in this base will simply not be able to be consumed by two lubricant consumers. So I will need to always have some production, some light heavy oil cracking available in order to just consume the massive amount of heavy oil being produced by this. So even when lubricant is low, then I'm prioritizing lubricant, but I still need to maintain some of the heavy oil cracking. Otherwise, the heavy oil will simply backlog in the system. Now this maybe goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. This is an extremely power hungry build. 44 megawatts of power for the refinery. 39 megawatts of power for the chemical plants and 33 megawatts of power for all the beacons. So all in all, 116 megawatts of power for this compact and well-crafted build. With these four blueprints, you will be able to transition smoothly from the very first unlocking of oil with the basic refinery getting 44 petroleum, 45 petroleum per second, all the way up to a very large base providing here 1660 petroleum per second outbound and all through the use of modular blueprints. These blueprints are of course available to you in the description below. So do check it out. If you made it this far into the video, then I think you like it. So how about hitting the like button? It actually means a lot for me in terms of seeing the interest and also helps with the YouTube algorithm. So liking, sharing, commenting, all that good stuff helps with the YouTube algorithm and the visibility of a video such as this. And if you want to watch more videos like this and you feel that I've earned your subscription, then thank you very much for that. And of course, if you want more Factorio content, then I have a Let's Play here on YouTube running four days a week, but I'm also streaming over on Twitch. That is Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Central European time. And the address is twitch.tv slash Thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay effective.